is Brian, and this is Herman the Sprinter Van. This content is sponsored by Outdoorsy. Through Outdoorsy, you can rent your camper van out to make extra cash, and you can rent a van to try van life before you commit. It is a 2019 Mercedes 2500 4x4, the 144 inch with the high roof. I got it brand new and I built it over the course of the shutdown during COVID-19 with the sole purpose of finding a new place to live and decided to do the whole West Coast. San Diego was my first stop and I never left. Come on inside and I'll show you the van. To begin with, I've got this nice piece of walnut here. When it's finished, it just has a really nice, sleek, modern finish, but it also provided me a space to put my light switch with the dimmer which I can dim those lights. And then uh, I've got a remote for my Max Air fan in the back. So I'm a professional carpenter and home builder out in uh, Denver. And so I've done a lot of design. Coming into this van, I really wanted to capture, one, something I hadn't seen done before. I decided to name the van Herman as an ode to Herman Miller, kind of the mid-mod company of companies, and designed all of the cabinets based off the Nelson bench. It has nice, sleek lines. This is all solid walnut, garage door, high-end, soft clothes, hinges. I've got walnut strips across the top to hide the seams from the Luan. One, this is a Brizzo wall-mounted faucet. I hadn't seen anybody do this on a van before, but I've done tons of these in houses and I wanted to kind of bridge that gap. We've got cold water on a water pump and then if you go all the way over, we've got piping hot water. To get it, I don't use any electricity. It's tied into the engine coolant, but I have about a four gallon holding tank for hot water. So as I drive the van, the water heats up and stores itself. So I have plenty of hot water there. I wanted a really deep sink because when you have a van, there's no counter space. It's all being used by something else, whether that's food prep or your cooktop. And so you need a place to put your dishes. So I went with a nice 10 inches deep stainless steel sink. This is solid surface Corian, which is lightweight and strong and repairable, which is ideal because things get broken and chipped and I can repair everything on this from scratches to stains. Moving right along, I have a mini duo true induction cooktop. I have no problems heating this thing with my electrical system, which I'll show you later. And it sits on top of my beautiful cabinet here with all my storage. So these knobs are by Buster and Punch. These just pull out and you've got your silverware and knives and things like that. I didn't want to mess up the front design with having any sort of latching mechanism. I wanted it to look like a kitchen as much as possible. So I came up with this threaded bolt idea. So th these are just machine bolts that I have a antiqued brass sleeve that just threads into it. And then you can't open these and they won't open on you while you drive. Back to my uh, cabinets here. We open them up, tons of storage, sticky mat, you must get one, things shift under flight, and so this keeps things from rolling around. The soft close blum hinges are clutch for that garage door open. I don't have any sort of fastening mechanism to keep these closed because the hinges are strong enough to hold themselves. For food storage, I have a stainless steel Dometic 4.8 cubic liters of storage. It's got a freezer inside. What I really liked about it was it's AC and DC and it switches automatically between the two. Very energy efficient. I can store about two weeks of food in just the fridge and it keeps it cold, no problem. Food is frozen, no problem. Because I lived in this for five months, I knew I was gonna need some closet storage. So I ended up building this closet. It's got a closet rod in here. I cut down hangers so they fit in there so I could hang jackets and I think I had a suit in there. On the bottom, I have the cassette toilet in there. This just pulls out. It's the Thetford uh, Porta Potty 135. So going up to the ceiling now, the ceiling is quarter inch Luan. You can't get a full solid piece of something that goes all the way across and I didn't want to do the shiplap. So there's a seam underneath each one of these pieces of walnut to hide the screws and seams so it looks like it's one giant piece. So I've got a 
bench. This is actually a shower bench that I put in as kind of one step to get into the bed because I have the raised bed. I have more storage under here. My water tank is under here and batteries and all that stuff. I had the bed custom made, so if you can't really see it, it's notched around these sides and it also folds in half to reveal access to storage under here. The whole thing lifts up and you can look under there. I sleep sideways. I'm six feet tall. My bed is 67 by 59, I believe. So I sleep at a slight angle and I'm super comfortable. And it's a memory foam mattress with cooling gel. So it sleeps nice and cool. I have tons of storage in here. I was gonna spend a lot of time. And so storage is really important. So I have cabinets all the way back. They all open and soft close. For cooling, I have the Max Air Fan, which is, I've never needed anything else. I also have an auxiliary AC that I can take in and out whenever I need to. I guess you could call this a smart van. I've mostly spent time on boats, not RVs. Everything I knew was kind of marine based. And so Mastervolt makes some of the best batteries you can get. And I believe they're the same company, but they also have C-Zone and they integrate with each other. Instead of having a whole bunch of circuit breaker panels and everything, I have a touch screen. Operates just like an iPhone. You swipe up, you can dim the screen, you can shut it off, you can turn it back on. So if I swipe, I can control my lights on and off. I have my eSpar heater controls, so I can turn that on and off. All of my monitoring and everything of battery levels. I have 400 amp hours remaining on my battery. On this side of the van, I have my fresh water tank. It's 22 gallons. I have my filter and hose just floating around in here. I have outdoor shower with a faucet, the hot water from the ISO temp tank. And I usually just take that curtain out and clip it on both sides and kind of stand between them and shower with hot water outside. I have my gigantic 400 amp hour, 50 to 500 watt a master volt lithium ion. Amazing battery and amazing tech. All of this is linked together so when my ignition is on it tells the system to start pulling power from the alternator and the house battery to charge. It charges from 60% to 100 in about an hour. And then I can run that for about a day, one to three days, depending on how much I'm using it. My inverter charger is the Mastervolt Combi Master. This is my Isotemp hot water heater. So I have the engine coolant running into this tank. It kind of just swirls around in there and then goes back to the front of the, the van and heats up the water incredibly fast and hot. Starting in the back of the van on the outside, I decided to go with the Alvans tire carrier because I needed a place for my gray water tank, which is where the spare tire used to be underneath. I have a tank under there that fits inside the tire carrier, and I put this on the back. The exterior of the van is actually white. It was very difficult to get a four by four van in the color I wanted. I had it wrapped with a vinyl wrap, which has been really great because I've beat the hell out of this thing. And the paint underneath is in perfect condition and the wrap has held up amazingly. I was told this will last about five years. Tires, I have the BF Goodwrench KO2s. I have these on every vehicle I own because they're amazing and they're also fantastic for off-roading. Something unique about Herman is it has a double sliding door. This is really cool because I have my surfboard and wetsuit fit in here. I had fly fishing gear and backpacks all hung up in here. It can just drip dry and it drains out. We're on top of the van. I had Rome build me a custom roof rack. I had it delivered in this massive crate and luckily I had access to a forklift so I forklifted it up mounted it. I don't have any solar panels so I use this whole area. I've had people sleep up here. I've set tables and chairs up here and watch surfers. Thanks for checking out my van. I put a lot of heart and soul into this thing and if you want to come rent it check out the link attached on this video. Thank you Outdoorsy for coming to show my van. Hope to see you on the road.
I hope you enjoyed that video. If you hadn't noticed, we do sell an ebook for how to convert a van. It has over 190 pages of detailed instructions and diagrams, also 25 video tutorials which are specifically for the ebook buyer. Creating a van for many people is obviously a really intimidating project, but I really believe, and I've seen it time and time and time again, that with the right information, anyone can turn out with a pretty decent van conversion. So check the link in the description, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, uh, and drop us a comment if you like this video. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.